and to have confidence. And the Lord spoke to me about boldness. Listen very carefully. The church needs Holy Spirit boldness. Why? So that we can pray and so that we can testify and so that we can obey the Word of God. Can you say Amen? amen. So what the devil really tries to do is to steal your boldness, to steal your courage, to steal your Confidence. Now there's a beautiful story in the book of Acts 4. Turn with me to Acts 4 verse 13. I'm reading out of the Amplified. And it says, Now when the men of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court, saw the confidence and boldness of Peter and John, and grasp the fact that they were uneducated and untrained ordinary men they were astounded and began to recognize that they had been with Jesus so let me quickly tell you the story in the previous chapter in Acts 3 the Bible says that John and Peter went up to the temple on the hour of prayer there was sitting a guy, the Bible says, that were lame since he was born. And so Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have, I give it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Stand up and be healed. And so it was a mighty <clears throat> miracle. And then the Sanhedrin and the Jewish council heard about this miracle and actually they were afraid of these mighty men of God, the apostles. And so then they called them in and they said, we don't want you any longer to speak about the name of Jesus. We don't want you any longer to preach about the resurrection or to speak about Jesus. And so Peter said, listen, we should obey the Lord more than you. You have to decide for yourself. But we will obey the Lord. And then this scripture came in. And they were astounded <clears throat> to see the boldness. What is boldness? Courage and confidence. Because these men were ordinary men. Amen. They didn't go to university, but they had the anointing. Can you say amen? amen? And so the devil tries to steal boldness, he tries to steal the courage and the confidence in the Christian's life. Listen very carefully. If you don't have boldness, you'll never pray. If you don't have boldness, you'll never become a witness. Say with me, boldness. So I pray this morning that the Lord will anoint our people with boldness. Holy Spirit boldness to do something for Jesus. And you know, people will start recognizing the boldness, the courage, the confidence in us when we walk with the Lord. When we spend enough time in the presence of God. Can you say Amen? amen. So the more you spend time with the Lord, the more you are waiting on the Holy Spirit, the more the boldness will come. Amen. If you don't spend time with the Lord, if you don't spend time in prayer, no boldness. What we really need among our people, among our young people like never before, is Holy Ghost boldness. If you don't have boldness, you will always find an excuse. And say, I am not the pastor. We know that and we are grateful for that. But you're supposed to become a great witness. Come on, for the name and the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. 
So the Lord spoke to me and said, I want to restore boldness among my people. We need more Holy Spirit boldness among our people. From the youngest to the oldest. Say with me, Holy Spirit. Boldness. And when you get that boldness, you will become a great channel in the hands of the Lord. So no more excuses. God wants to do something in and through your life. What the devil really wants to do is to steal your boldness. To steal your confidence. And even the Lord spoke to, to Joshua. You can find that in Joshua 1 and he said a couple of times. I want you to be bold. I want you to have good courage. Yeah. A couple of times he told me, be of good courage, be bold, because the Lord your God is with you. Come on, let me prophesy over you. Be bold, be full of courage, because the Lord your God is with you. You need Holy Spirit boldness. Come on, so that you can do great kingdom exploits for Jesus Christ. You don't have boldness you never pray listen to a great word if you don't have boldness you never testify you will always find an excuse we don't need more arrogance we need more boldness and the Bible says these men these apostles were ordinary men uneducated men listen to this but they saw the boldness upon them why because they've recognized that these men have been with Jesus. Yes. Listen to me. When you're a man or a woman that walking with God, spending time in the presence of God, people will start recognizing that. That's why you've got to wait on the Lord. You've got to spend time with the Lord. And the more you do, the more the boldness will become a reality in your life. Lift your right hand with me, say, Holy Spirit, anoint me with boldness. So now, after that, the, the apostles Peter and John were with the Sanhedrin, the Jewish uh, high court and council. They went to be with the other apostles, and the, the Bible says they, they started praying. And listen what they prayed. Acts 4.29, please. And now, Lord, I'm reading out of the Amplified. It amplifies. And now, Lord, observe their threats. Take them into account and grant your bondservants that they may declare your message of salvation with great confidence while you extend your hand Check this out. To heal and signs and wonders, attesting miracles take place through the name and the authority and power of your holy servant and son Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were meeting together was shaken. A sign of God's presence. Tell your, tell your neighbor, may your house be shaken by the power of God. Oh, come on, you are too, too quiet. Come on, turn to somebody to the other side. May your house be shaken by the presence and the power of God. Huh? Look at this. The place were shaken. Woo! May Pretoria North be shaken by the power of God. May South Africa be shaken by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, they've prayed and say, Lord, give us boldness. Isn't this profound? That the council saw the boldness on them. Even, I mean, although these people were uneducated, ordinary men, they saw the boldness. They, they could see that these people had been with Jesus. They were like Jesus. Our families and our friends and our colleagues and wherever you are should see the boldness upon your life. 
Amen. And so they pray that the Lord will anoint them with boldness so that they can speak the word of the Lord. And the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness and courage. Tell your neighbor, be of good courage. Come on, speak it. Be of good courage. Holy Spirit, courage. Holy Spirit, boldness. Now let me give you three things. Write this down. Why do we need boldness? First of all, you need boldness to pray. If you don't pray, absolutely nothing will happen in your life. Write this down. Nothing. Nothing will happen without prayer. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So we should pray. And the more we pray, the more we will see the power of God in action. Can you say Amen? amen. Nothing happens without prayer. Say it with me. Nothing happens without prayer. Say it again. Nothing happens without prayer. So you need boldness. To pray. Many people say, Pastor, don't ask me to pray. I don't want to pray, and especially not in front of other people. You have a lack of boldness. You have a lack of boldness. You need more boldness so that you can pray. If you don't pray, nothing will happen. And you're not supposed only to pray only for yourself. You're supposed to start praying for other people. You're supposed to intercede for other people. You're supposed to stand in the gap for other people. Amen? So you need boldness to pray. Now, check this verse, Hebrews 4.16. Check this out. It says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Hebrews 10, 19 from the Amplified Version, Therefore, believers, since we have confidence, that's the other word, for boldness. Confidence, courage, Boldness, say it with me. Confidence, courage, boldness. Say it again. Confidence, courage, boldness. Since we have confidence and full freedom, I like this, to enter the holy place, the place where God dwells, <laughs> the presence of God. By means of the blood of Jesus. So thank God for the blood of the Lamb. And because of the blood of the Lamb, we can enter the presence of God. Come on, any place, any time. We have the confidence. We have the boldness to pray. If the devil can get it right to steal your boldness, you will not pray. And if you don't pray, Nothing will happen. We need more prayer warriors. We need more people that are willing to stand in the gap. Can you say amen? amen. Tell your neighbor, please pray for me. Please pray for me. We need more people who can pray with confidence. Amen. We need more people that can pray with boldness. So be of good courage. Lift your head. Amen. Be positive. Don't allow the enemy to steal your boldness. You need more people that can pray. Okay, so you need boldness to testify. The second one. There's a great commission. Go into all the world and make disciples. You know, win the lost at every cost. How many souls are you winning for Jesus? 
When was the last time that you testified to someone? Come on, I equip you this morning again. You need boldness. You need confidence. In Christ, Holy Spirit, boldness. Amen. Holy Spirit, courage to testify, to be a witness. Amen. So, what we need to do is to wait more on the Lord. Acts 1.8. Check this out. But you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. Why? To tell people about me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. Boldness to testify. Boldness to be a witness for Jesus. Wherever you work, at your business place, at your family. Amen. There where your neighbors are. It's time to win people for Jesus. I want to encourage you. When you pray, pray like the apostles and say, Lord, give me boldness. Think about this. There's too many Christians that don't have boldness. And then those guys who have the boldness, they get criticized. <laughs> oh, that pastor is arrogant. Oh, that worship leader is arrogant because he's bold. No, he's not arrogant. He's bold. As bold as a lion. Tell your neighbor, may the Lord make you bold as a lion. This was a good word right there. So when you see somebody who's dynamic, don't say he's arrogant, he's not. He's bold. Yes, yes. Courage. Come on now. Confidence. In Christ. Not in ourselves. Come on. By the power of the Holy Spirit. So what we need to do more is spending more time in the presence of God. Come on, I give you great keys. You have to wait on the Holy Spirit. And the more you do, the more you will grow in confidence. And then you get to a place where you can say, Thus save the Lord. And even when you get criticized, you don't worry about it. I mean, if they don't like you, too bad. I won't tell you that I like you anyway. So. <laughs> When you get bold for Jesus, listen to this, the Sanhedrin, here's the revelation. The, the Pharisee spirit will start criticizing you. When you get bold and you say, the say of the Lord, the Sanhedrin will start criticizing you. But if you remain pleaser and you only say just those things that people want to hear, Oh, don't worry about criticism. You'll never be criticized. But when you like the apostles and like our Lord Jesus and you speak the truth, you speak the word, that's why they prayed, Lord, give us boldness so that we can speak the word. Huh? So that we can talk about you, Jesus. Lift your right hand and say, Holy Spirit, anoint me with boldness. Come on, you must pray. So that I can testify. So that I can pray. In spite of criticism. Amen. Touch your forehead. Say Holy Spirit. Make my forehead. Hard as diamond. Okay now. Let's, let's manifest. Look at me. You know. For all those spirits of. Those people that don't like you, those criticism, those negative remarks and words, those family and colleagues that don't like you and they criticize you, those spirits of jealousy, 
Ouch. Not everybody is going to like your blessings and prosperity. Not everybody is going to like you. As soon as you start getting blessed and anointed, people will start criticizing. The Sanhedrin spirit, listen to the word of the Lord, will start criticizing you. So, let me show you what I do. Lord, make my forehead, some of you laugh now, but I'm teaching you good stuff. Make my forehead as hard as diamonds, so when those uh, <coughs> critical spirits come, spirits of jealousy, negative spirits, through people, words, opinions, take it down. You understand? I don't worry about it. You don't even care about it. If people don't like you, come on. Show your neighbor. Show your neighbor. If you're jealous of me, come on. Come on, show it. If you don't like me, you criticize me, those family, those friends, so called friends, wherever you are, they don't like you. Because my forehead is as hard as diamonds. You know, the Lord spoke to the prophet Ezekiel and said, I make your forehead as hard as diamond. You see? But my heart soft. Come on, place your hands on your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, give me a gentle heart. Amen. Give me a soft heart. Come on, pray. Oh, this is good. A heart for you, Lord. A heart for your people. <laughs> A gentle spirit, a gentle heart to love people. Come on, people are on the agenda of Jesus. We gotta love people. But you gotta have a hard forehead. Why? So that you don't sit in the hole every now and then when people don't like you. Oh, Pastor, they don't like me, they criticize me. So what? Come on, show me. So what? But a soft heart. Come on. A gentle heart. Amen. So we need boldness to pray because if we don't pray, nothing will happen. We need boldness to be witnesses, to testify. That's what they prayed. Lord, give us boldness so that we can speak the word. And then the third thing. You need boldness so that you can get involved. And the more you wait on the Holy Spirit, just go back to Acts 1, 8, please. The more you wait on the Lord in the presence of God, the more you wait on the Holy Spirit to fill you. The more you wait on Him to teach you, to change you, the more you will get boldness. The Holy Spirit gives boldness. Amen. The Holy Spirit works his gifts. The Holy Spirit works His fruit. Listen to this. The Holy Spirit works boldness. The more you start walking with the Holy Spirit, the more you wait on Him, the more boldness you will get. Why? He works the power of God. He works the anointing. Listen. That's why Acts 180 is so important. Go and wait. Wait for what? Wait on the Holy Spirit. Wait on His power. Wait on His anointing. And then you will be my witnesses. You will receive power when you wait on the Holy Spirit. And then you will become my witnesses. Are you a witness? Or are you a silent partner? A secret agent. No, Lord. Pastor, we love the Lord, you know. We are Pentecostal people for the last... 30 years, you know, but we are silent partners. We are secret agents. My goodness! Are you also following Jesus? Are you also a child of God? My word! And we've been working together for the last 25 years. I didn't know that you're also Pentecostal. 
No, I'm a secret agent. Ouch. I'm a silent partner. You see? Come on. I'm giving you the truth. We have too many of these kinds kind of silent partners and secret agents. We need people with boldness. Can you say amen? amen? We need people that can take stand. Come on. For Jesus Christ. And for His work. We need bold people that can pray and make a godly difference. We need people that will go out and testify. And then people that will get involved. Because your involvement will make a huge difference. We need you to get involved. Where? In the church. We need you to go out and bring people to church. Come on, even for tonight's meeting. Call somebody. WhatsApp somebody. Email somebody. Do something. Be available. Get involved. Come on, this is good. But if you have a lack of boldness, if you're not bold, listen to this, you will never get involved because you will always find an excuse. Now don't ask me to do anything. Don't ask me to bring anything. Why? Because you have a lack of boldness. But the Holy Spirit lives in all of us. And He works boldness. Holy Spirit boldness. So get involved. Come on, jump into the river. Get involved. Stop making excuses. Do something. If you feel you can sing, let us know. If you can play something, let us know. <laughs> if you can do something, let us know. But all of us can pray. Yes. Not everybody can preach, but everybody's supposed to pray. Say amen. amen. And then all of us should go out. And be witnesses. Don't be longer a silent partner. Yeah, I'm a partner, you know. Of the church and of our Lord. And, but I'm really silent. No. Let's break the silence. Boldness will break the silence. That was good. Your boss, your colleagues, your friends, your family, your neighbors. Must know that you love the Lord. Can you say amen? They must know that you follow Jesus. <coughs> Boldness. And I feel it's a missing ingredient in, in the lives of many Christians. So you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness. Still relevant. All of us today, we should wait on the Lord more and more so that He can fill us also with boldness. So get involved and make a difference. Ephesians 3 verse 12. I love this. It says, In Him and through faith in Him we may approach God with freedom and and confidence. Yeah, this is wonderful. Look at this. In Christ. Say with me, in Christ. in Christ. In Christ and through faith. Because you cannot please God without faith. Come on, learn something. It's impossible to please God without faith. Even when we pray, we should pray in faith. Come on. Whatever you do, it should be done by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. So in Christ, through faith, this is powerful, we can approach God with freedom and confidence. I'm closing with this. Check this out. Hebrews 10.35. It's not there. It's okay. Just put it on for the viewers. Hebrews 10.35. It says, do not therefore fling away. I like the Amplified. In other words, don't throw it away. Do not fling away your fearless confidence. For it has a glorious and great reward. So many people neglect their boldness. They fling it away. They throw it away. And the Bible says, don't do it because... That boldness 
will actually lead to a great reward. Because when you're bold, you pray. When you're bold, you speak. When you're bold, you testify. Come on. When you're bold, you get involved. When you're bold, when you become bold, you say, Lord, yeah, I am. I want to do something for you, Jesus. And because of that boldness, there's a great reward. So don't throw away your boldness. Thank you for that one. Amen. Don't fling away your boldness. Amen. Start growing in boldness. I pray that the boldness will start increasing in your life. You're a teacher, many teachers here. You need boldness to speak the truth. Taking stand for Jesus and His kingdom. Business people, whatever you do. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Don't be ashamed to live for Jesus. Don't be ashamed for the word of God. You need boldness. And these apostles were ordinary men. But the council saw the boldness in them. Because they've been with Jesus. And the more you spend time with him. The more you will become like him. Say it with me, the more I spend time with Him, the more I will become like Him. Jesus is the Lion out of the tribe of Jude. He's the chief apostle. He's full of boldness. Think about this. Full of confidence. There's no one like Him. And He wants us to be like him. It's not God's will for his kids, his children, us as his people, to have a lack of confidence and a lack of boldness and oh shame, we cannot do anything, you know. No. You won't even like it when your kids are like that. Oh daddy, don't ask me to do this. I, I'm a nothing. I can't do anything. He won't like it. Because it's my boy, it's my girl. No, I want you to be bold. You are my blood. Oh. Huh? You get teenagers, they spend time the whole day in the room. They only get out when they need food. Sulking. Lacking of confidence. And many Christians are like that. Sitting in holes, sitting in rooms. Only when they need the Lord, then they get out of the hole. Lord, I need food. Lord, help me. Lord, bless me. He loves you so much. So thank God for His grace. Amen. His grace is sufficient for all of us. But it's God's will for you to approach Him with boldness. As a God. This is so good. As a son of God. As a daughter of God. Every time when you become bold and you speak about Him and you pray for people and you testify and you get involved, whatever the Lord lays upon your heart, start doing it. Open your hand, open your heart. Get involved. Do something. Amen? And every time when you start operating, I'm closing with this, operating in boldness, this is powerful. There's a great reward for it. Wow. This is powerful. My boldness in Christ leads to a reward. Now let's, let's ask the Holy Spirit this morning to anoint all of our people, anoint you, all of us with boldness. So that the devils can start running wherever you go. Know. Amen, so that they seek and get healed wherever you are. Amen, so that you can cast out devils wherever you go. Some of you don't know what you're saying. Now just say something. Say amen. Or amen. Say boldness. Or yes. Stand to your feet for a moment. Lift your hands with me. Pray with me. Say Holy Spirit. 
need more boldness. Anoint me with your boldness. Confidence. Give me courage so that I can become what you want me to be. A powerful witness. Come on, let's pray. A powerful prayer warrior. Use me, Lord. Holy Spirit, start speaking through me. I want your anointing to flow through me. Here I am. I'm available. Use me, Lord, to win the lost. In Jesus' name. Send me out, Lord, with your power and boldness and confirm your word with healings, miracles, signs and wonders wherever I go in Jesus name Amen Come on let's love for Jesus Come on.